This is part two of our tempo series this week. In part one, we looked at a lot of things regarding recording without a click track. Today, we're going to talk about matching tempos between various source materials and what is possible inside Logic and maybe what it can't do. But we're going to be looking at a lot of that right now. So what we're going to start with is talking about the overall tempo map of your project and how we can alter that and move it around. Then we're going to look at taking two different songs and making the tempo match on the two of them, kind of like what you do if you were spinning records and you wanted to line up the tempo between them. We're also going to look at some of the other things that go along with both of those things. So buckle up and let's dive right into this. Okay, so I have an empty project now inside Logic, and I'm going to be pulling in this sample song. Before we bring this in, we want to set our tempo to adapt project tempo. We're going to bring in the full song. We're not going to record it. We're just going to import it. Nothing else is in there. There's no tempo established. And so it should just bring it in. Now, we're going to listen to this, but we're also going to put a drummer track on here so that we have a sense for the tempo. We'll line that right up. This is the full extent. So you can see the tempo of this particular song is analyzed a little bit all over the place. A little bit more free form, not recorded with a click probably. And let's change the drum pattern here. We're going to listen to it in a second, but I do want to... We'll just do something simple here. Okay, so listen to how the tempo fluctuates when I play this. Put a loop pattern around it. So it's hitting all the major downbeats. It sounds weird, but it gives us confidence that what we're going to do would make sense moving forward. So first I'm going to put this into halftime for the drum track. Okay, now I want to actually either make this usable so that I can import it with another song. Most songs are not going to have the exact same tempo map to them. And so we need to perhaps get rid of some of the fluctuation here. One thing I'm going to do right off the bat is turn on flex follow, flex and follow. It'll get analyzed for that. Now, because I just want this section that's just that long, Let's go ahead and just cream everything else for now. Because it's on for flex and follow, now I can come through here and remove all the tempo variations. And the tempo variations will be gone from that one piano part. So changing one of the other modes here does give you a little bit more definition and what's being changed, but I will almost always just come through to our track headers, add the groove track, and set up one of these as the, the groove and the other one to follow it. We heard a little bit of distortion there, so let's just put this back onto the top. Now we have this part, which has been really well prepared. We can now come through here 
and make this into an Apple loop. So now we can do this. I'm not exactly sure what key it's in. It does have a key, so let's actually pull open just a piano part for a second. I don't have perfect pitch. Maybe some of you do and already know exactly what we're looking at here. Let's turn off the sends for patch merging. Yamaha piano here. And move my keyboard. So. So in the key of B flat major, that was a little clunky figuring that out, but it happens. So we're going to add this to the loop major. We will say B flat major tempo is set to 150, even though it's really half that it just analyzes it as that. And it's a little easier. I just go along with it in some cases. Let's see, so we're going to do keyboards, piano, we'll do single, clean, acoustic, relaxed, cheerful, dry. There's a little bit of processing, but not much. A little groove. So it's all on the left there. And we'll call this piano loop test create. Now it's doing its thing, creating all the different elements. And what we're going to do next is pull it out of the loop bin onto a project. So a little bit of advanced work here, prepping up a file like this. So if this is part of a song where you want some section of a different song or some other audio loop, and you want to actually bring it in, and use it, you do have to do some of this work in order to get that all prepped up. It's not an automatic process, which is okay. I think there's some value in this. Let's see. Piano loop test. There it is. And it sounds like that because the project is currently in C major. And so it's having to be transposed up to match that. So if this was uh, in B flat major, and now we can use this in any of our projects. So it's going to be able to pull in, has its tempo information and pitch information all saved with it, and it becomes usable in any other project and it will match the tempo of the other projects. So just to recap a little bit, I cut off a piece of this. I imported it using the adapt function, which is probably the first and most important thing because then we got this tempo analysis. Then I told it to flex and follow. I wiped out the entire tempo so that it was consistent which then match this. I'm using the groove track. Now the groove track won't necessarily transfer into the Apple loops. That's just for our version right here. And if we wanted to use that in any other project, then we would have to do the same thing. We would have to uh, turn on the groove track and make sure that it's aligned to whichever part we want to be the lead on that, the quantization lead. Okay, so this is all very useful. I think it's relatively easy to be able to do this and, and move things around. The other thing which we could have done here, let's undo a few steps, see if this works. 
yeah, back to this one right here. We're still in adapt mode, but you can see that it's all the way down. So let's fix that for a second. So the other option we have, and I'm going to pull in a song. We're not going to be able to listen to it because of copyright issues. So I'll just visually let you see kind of what's going on. But we'll find another song here. And you'll see this one is all over the place in terms of tempo. There we go. Don't show for now. But I could at this point, let's say we're doing following the flex and follow. I could now pull this one on top of this track. Let's undo that for a second so you could see the difference here. The tempo is going to come with it. So it's pulling that tempo because I dragged this one. If we were to do it the opposite way, then that one would be pulled with it. So we could simply pull these two songs on top of each other, and the tempo comes from the one you're dragging, and the two of them, when you play, should theoretically line up in terms of the timing. Now, does it line up, line up in terms of the harmony? No. So you'd have to actually figure out how that works. Either pull songs from the same key signature, do some sort of transposition, or pull a part that's mostly rhythm from one and melody from the other, but you could do that pretty easily. Now that we have two tempo maps for each of these songs, we can pull them back and forth and the tempo will come with it. So you can actually layer songs this way. And I would say 80% of the time it works great. Another 10% of the time you can make it work. And then 10% after that, you need to do a lot more work and it may not be possible. Okay, that's it for today's video. This is part two of the tempo series. We're going to do one more and that is where we're going to take this stuff and create a humanized feel for it using tools to add that human element.